This probably won't look good for my LinkedIn profile, for my job interview. Well, it depends on the job. True, true. Creepy stalker would be perfect. Anybody who's looking for one. While a vast majority of visitors to northern Italy flocked to Venice and the beautiful canals, instead, we departed Rome by train and traveled to the town of Bassano del Grappa at the very base of the Italian Alps. Why? Well, a few reasons. But the main one? My good friend, Sara Lando. Sara and her husband, Alessandro, live here in Bassano, surrounded by fresh air and small town charm. Out of all the amazing people I've met on my travels, I feel like Sara deserves some extra time in this episode, because she's not only a unique artist that I'm inspired by, but she's also like a sister to me. With no time to waste, Sara met us at the train station and we set off to explore the town. So this is, we call it Piazza della Fontana because there's the fountain there. We have the big um, church that we have on this side that is covered by uh, this fence here is um, Chiesa di San Francesco. And then we have a second piazza and that was called Piazza dei Signori, is now Piazza Libertà. How long have you lived here? I was born near here, like I was born in Marostica, but I lived in Bassano uh, all of my life. The thing is, here you're basically close to anything because you're one hour from Venice, one hour from the mountain, one hour from the sea. It's a big, small city. Like, it's small enough that it's, you can live as if it was a town, but there's everything. Grappa de Liquor is actually from here, and I will now take you to the oldest grappa place in Italy. Really? Well, in the world, probably, yeah. All right, so this is one of my favorite places, and a, a very historic important place. This is beautiful in here, it is. actually. It is. What is this called? Mezzo Mezzo. And this is particularly here? Yes, you can only find that in Bassano. It's like the official Bassano aperitivo. It feels very light and it goes down very well, but once you have like three or four of these, everything gets happier. Story of my life. So we're now getting to the wooden bridge. This is uh, one of the only, I think, two covered wooden bridges. What, the other one is in Florence. That's from the war, on the wall there. These are all bullet holes? Yes. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, so obviously you wouldn't want to patch any of that because no. part of history. No, almost everything has historical significance. Whenever you try to like, build something new and you, you dig a hole, probably like there's a Roman uh, structure under there. We kind of want to remind people that it shouldn't happen very often. This is really nice. So this is the castle. Bassano was under the Ezzelino family, so they were the, the family owning the place, and that was their castle. Mount Grappa is somewhere behind yeah. those clouds. Well, part it of it. would be somewhere that way. <laughs> we have a statue there, that's Generale Giardino. He's looking at Mount Grappa. He held Mount Grappa from the opposing army during the war. And so for you, waking up in the morning and seeing Mount Grappa is a very comforting... Yes, place. yes. It's like, it's like a relative for us. Like, we, we grow up going there in the summer, like hiking Mount Grappa and it's, you, you hear the stories and then it's, it's part of your daily life. It's not just a random place, for us at least. No, that's really beautiful. That's really beautiful. After that brisk walk through town, Sara decided that I needed even more exercise. Where are we going right now? We are going to the museum because there's something really cool that I want you to experience. Uh, because a lot of my inspiration for photography doesn't come from photography or even from visual stuff. Okay. So I hope you're uh, in comfortable clothes. Yes, you are. Yeah, I, I don't know how to dance at all. I've never done it. That's great because this is not that kind of stuff. Um, what's going to happen here, it's a um, dance practice that's called Dance Well. It's very inclusive and it started to help um, Parkinson's disease patients uh, move and it became um, an experiment in um, uh, integration because it's completely open, completely free to the public. It's in the museum, so you dance uh, among the art pieces and you don't have to sign up, you don't have to even say your name. So this, this helps because um, someone might be undocumented and someone might not want to share who they are. They might not want to share their story and because it's non-verbal, it allows people to, communi to communicate on a level that doesn't require to share the same language. 
All warmed up and a bit danced out, I had no idea what Sara had in store for me at her studio. So this is your studio? studio yeah, my tiny, tiny, cozy studio. It used to be my dad's upholstery. Uh, is that a word in English? He, my dad is a retired upholsterer. Oh, that's cool. So he had used this before. So it was yeah. already kind of set up to be open. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It was very, very woodwork and like free upholster couches and stuff like that. Oh, very cool. Well, like the natural light's amazing. Yeah, it's really mo small. Like I mostly use this for when I come back from traveling around and I need to like work on post-production. If I have to shoot like a single person, it's fine but I often work like on location or in other cities. But it's a nice place to come back to. Can you show me an example of a shoot? Is Are you something willing we can do? to be photographed? Am I willing to be yes. photographed? Um, yes, yes. So can we like be awkward together? Like, <laughs> I'm like awkward <laughs> Rather than all you the time. Watch, yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty good at it. So can you, yes, here. And I would like you to turn your um, chin down a little bit. Nice, awesome. And right now, so you're sad, whatever, right? You can, well, you you said whatever. Like I can do whatever. Yeah, we, we kind of limited on you can't light my hair on fire. So yeah, I, I feel like fine, between I can work with that. So how about? Is it foundation? It's not. It's clown makeup. Oh, of course it is. It is what? It's clown makeup. It's just like it's gonna be. It's gonna be fine. You cannot just do something silly for the silliness effect. It has to look good in the end. Because like, again, you're putting your trust in me. So it has to be a cool photo. It cannot just be like a photo, like a silly photo that's just fun. I don't know if I'd call this trust so much. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I will call it trust. I'll have to do the neck too, because otherwise it will look weird. Fine, I can help with the hair Thanks. a little bit. Oh, they say, yes! I like that. <laughs> I look so excited. Chin down a little bit. Nice. And I just want the hand to be there. As if, yes, as if you're just pulling, like, making space. Okay, am I looking at the camera off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if this was an actual photo shoot, we would go on for a couple of hours. Yeah. And it would get weirder and weirder. Oh, that's good. Yeah. But I also want to show you the after part, like the mix of the media part. Okay. It's okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. This is basically just, um, again, like a passport photo. But like that for me is a good starting point because um, there's still some shadows. It's not completely flat, mm -hmm. but it's not like it doesn't have a light that takes away too much tension. Okay. So it's a good plate to work on. And I really like these. Uh, I will have, I will do a laser printer, print of that, like a very cheap one. Okay. And then we'll start with, like a I'm bunch excited, of those. I'm excited, I'm excited. Yeah. I will also print this on acetate. Acetate is a, is a thicker plastic. Yeah. I'm very curious about this. Oh, me too. Oh, cool. That's how that works. Yeah. You're putting that over top of your monitor. Yeah. And matching it. Yeah. To size. Yeah. Whoa. This is kind of cool, isn't it? It is. It's slightly offset too, so it creates like yeah. a, kind of like a, a ghostly feeling. Yeah. Wow! Look at that. You're creating texture. Yeah. With scotch tape? Of course. No, I'm starting to understand. Yeah, and whenever I get to a place that I remotely like, I will take a photo of it. This is a layer. This is exactly how a layer in Photoshop works. I know. Yeah. But this is what we did before we had Photoshop. I know. All right. So how about... Sorry, Alaya. It's all right. We can always print another one. Oh, oh yeah. not my eye. <laughs> oh, man. Whoa. And also, because this is bent, see how it catches the light weird? It does. And I like that. You have the progression when you're taking photos, yeah. too. 
patchwork. I like how you can See how basically you have two completely different effects. I, I would say that I don't like to start from a photo that is too intense. I like to start with something that has presence and then build the intensity inside it after with the process. Hmm. This probably won't look good for my LinkedIn profile, for my job interview. Well, it depends on the job. True, true. Creepy stalker would be perfect. Anybody <laughs> yeah. who's looking for one. What do I want to try? You know what I really like? The burn effect. Okay. With the fire, All but right. I kind of want to. I want to burn that, and yeah. then I want to put it over top of the digital. Absolutely. This is like the typical thing that I've I've done for years. So I need to distress this a little bit more. Heat it. I just want like a light heat transfer for the warping. Yeah. Okay. So I can kind of overlay that here. And I like how obsessive I'm being about. I'm already so distorted and I'm getting the uh, exposure right. I've gone from traditional to trying to fix digital. I can go this route with the tape, right? If yeah, I use tape, exactly, uh, yeah. we'll pull that off. Okay, let me try that. Here's because what I'm thinking is there's a lot of so texture proud. here. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Oh, no, 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 not yet. Don't be proud oh, yeah. yet. Yes, that's exactly what I want. Just a little bit more rough. But it's going to be like it's, it's yeah, a broken, like broken part. It's completely different than than anything else I've done before, which is which makes it really interesting as well. Mixed media is fun though, yes. and I feel like everybody can do this. Everybody yeah. Oh can yeah. Do this at home. I've been doing this with a uh, first grader. I've been doing this with um, in women's shelter refugees. It always starts from a place of everybody being like, "Oh, I don't do that." And then you just give them enough time and enough glue sticks and then <laughs> something amazing happens and they start creating this stuff that is insane and and it's unique because nobody is ever going to be able to replicate that they're not going to be able to replicate that like i love that by the way i also love what we're doing is we're we're creating something tangible physical and analog and then we're taking photos of it with yes. something very digital coming yeah. back to the table so we by the time we're done we can't say what's digital what's not yeah. digital because it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all yeah and it's just and in that that way the tools are there so that you can express your own creativity yeah. it doesn't matter what order you're doing it in yeah and i think i'm pretty good i have to say that this has really inspired me because i'm so trapped in the digital world i've been trying to think more analog and a more right. pre-production aspect of things but what I really started to think about when we're doing this is I always think about, even when I go back to the basics, yeah. I'm always thinking about the end result first. Right. And then I lose that path of discovery. So yeah. this is kind of reminds me to just sort of be a child and play and experiment. Yeah. And then the end result can be something even more spectacular. Because you know what? Like if you already know what's going to be at the end, it means you're doing what you have done already, what you already know how to do. And I think that you never get to a point. Like it's, it's a risk that you need to take. The, failure is always there but if it works it can be spectacular I agree so and you promise this will come off my face right I hope <laughs> okay well I feel like before we go to the next next location I'm gonna need to not look like this what I love about this kind of art is that it's tactile sure you can see it on screen but it's all about the feeling you get when looking at it close up the digital photo is more like a documentation rather than the real tangible result while you may not be able to get a personal invite to Sara's studio when you visit Pisano do Grappa, you can certainly still enjoy one of its primary attractions, the mountain from which it gets its namesake, Monte Grappa. Are you sure this isn't like a Game of Thrones advertisement? <laughs> yeah. Winter is here. It is. Where are we going? We are at the Osario del Monte Grappa. 
This is where about 23,000 uh, uh, soldiers um, that, who died in the First World War are buried. Yeah, this is kind of beautiful actually. On a good day, you would be able to see uh, in the distance. Yeah. But I think it's also really nice to be here on a day like this. It gives you a sense of the place. It gives you a sense of the meaning of this place. It's really eerie. It is. It's a lot of snow. It is. So what, what are all these monuments here? These are all the names of the mountains where the war was fought. And on a good day, I would show you, but since we can't see anything, we can also yeah. go back. Can't even see where we came from anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and it just got colder. After walking around the snow-covered grounds, I quickly realized that the only way I was going to get a proper photo of this location was from the air. So what we're going to do don't is... Don't kill us. Don't kill us. We really want to see what this monument looks like. It's hard to see all of it because of the snow. Like I'm trying yeah. to find... Let's see if I can find any shot here. The mountains in the background to go a little lower. The monument. That's everything we couldn't see before. This is everything we couldn't see before, yeah. So it's kind of nice here, videos so that everybody can kind of see where we're going. Yeah. But with photos, what we can actually do is switch to photo mode. So let's just go ahead and bring, I'm going to bring the exposure up so we can yeah, that kind of makes see what's sense going on. And then let's just so throttle cool. forward because we're getting a little bit of fog. And so I'm thinking like some leading lines here. I love the altitude and then I always wait. So I wait for it to kind of settle yeah. and take a shot. The last thing that I absolutely had to do in Bassano del Grappa was to get a photo of its famous bridge. After scouting and failing to find a spot along the riverbank, I decided it would be best to shoot from a nearby overpass. Yeah, look. Hey guys. Where's the good spot? Quack, 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 quack. He's talking to me. I think he's... They're very, very, very vocal. Yeah. A little bit more. Somewhere around here I think is nice. Trees start to obscure the left side of the houses. They don't obscure the bridge. Even the construction of the bridge it doesn't look great, but since the focal point is actually the town, I think it'll work. So in this case, I'm going to use the X-T3 and the 18 to 135. So I'm not going to get much color with these types of clouds. So what I'm going to do is set up here, wait past the sunset and capture the blue hour when all the lights come on in the old city. So instead of just opening the tripod up and extending everything out, which kind of means that I'd be taking up this much space, what I can actually do and what most tripods have is the ability to adjust the feet. So in this case, I can actually just pull the feet and create a situation where I can put this on here. Instead, what I can do is just have one foot. And in a lot of situations, because these feet are round, they make contact with the surface on all edges. So it becomes actually really nice and stable. As the sun started to set, I noticed that not all of the town's lights and windows were lighting up. The town's fairly illuminated in the center, but there's not a lot of light from the windows. So what I'm gonna have to do is kind of get this into post-processing, uh, lighten certain areas up and see how much light I actually have to work with. It's really hard to see on the back of the camera, so this is a situation where it's gonna be way easier once I get these files on the computer. Selecting the final image is always much easier on a larger screen when they're loaded into Adobe Lightroom. In this case, the lights turned out to illuminate the town fairly well, and I was able to come away with a nice blue hour shot. I hope that with this episode, you're inspired to venture into small towns on your travels that are off the tourist track and not just the big cities. Not only is it nice to photograph somewhere where there aren't thousands of tourists all around you, but the resulting images have the potential of being quite unique because they showcase a less visited destination. The good news is that next week's episode is very exciting because we'll be visiting a secret location. And no, I'm not telling you yet, but the bad news is that it's also going to be our season finale. If you want me to continue this series, please let me know by clicking the like button and subscribing to this channel. Should we create a season two? If so, what would you like to see? Where should we go? Let me know in the comments below. This was really fun and we couldn't fit everything into this episode. So if you want to spend more time with Sara and see the incredible work, well, her incredible work that she did, we're posting an extended interview and you can find the link below.